Hi there, heavy metal maniacs. Uh, we here we are with the second video uh, on this YouTube channel on the Iron Horde Promotions channel. Um, first of all, I would like to thank everyone who uh, sent their feedback for my uh, first video. Uh, we received a lot of uh, supportive comments. A lot of you watched the video in its entirety. Thirty minutes is not. A little so thanks to for all those who send their suggestion feedback criticism constructive criticism it is all appreciated um, today I'm making another video and I am focusing on a particular uh, period of time in the history of heavy metal um, I'm choosing my uh, 10 favorite albums from this category and um, hope obviously that uh, um, some of you will uh, discover new new bands, new albums with this video. I will be focusing uh, on the new wave of British heavy metal period, uh, which ranges between 1978 more or less and 1983. Obviously, this these dates are not cast in stone. The years, the period, and the range is not cast in stone. There are a lot of debates on when the new wave of British heavy metal started, the movement started, and when it actually ended. Uh, I'm not going to mention in this uh, list the bigger bands. I'm not going to mention I Am Maiden, Saxon, um, Diamond Head, uh, uh, Venom. I mean, most, most of you know these bands already. I'm going to focus on the more obscure to a certain extent, because there are some of, of the bands which I'm going to mention, which, as far as I'm concerned, are not really that obscure, but apparently for the majority of people, um, they are not so well known compared to the top top bands, um, which I have mentioned. I'm going to start my list from those that I think are more obscure, and I'm going to leave the ones which I think they are more known comparatively uh, for the end. So uh, here we go. My first uh, album of this list is this one right here. Wildfire, Brute Force and Ignorance. Um, brilliant album um, with a typical new wave for British heavy metal sound like classic heavy metal, uh, up-tempo, um, catchy choruses, great vocals. By the way, vocals on this album is uh, Paul Mario Day, which was one of the first, not the first, but one of the first vocalists with uh, Iron Maiden. I love I loved, um, the logo of this band. It really it has something from the early 70s uh, vibe. Uh, uh, this album was released in uh, 1983 almost at the end when this the fate of uh, new wave of British heavy metal was uh, slowly dying out basically um, uh, there are other albums which are in this list which are even uh, at a, were even released at a later date than 1983 84 85 86 um, yet they are still made by bands who are who were playing New Wave of British Heavy Metal, unfortunately the albums came a bit late and that's why they did, they weren't as much as a hit as previous albums, which ranged from 1980, 81 and 82. Um, this is very surprisingly a very underrated album, very little known about this band, um, a band which is little known, Not we know a lot about this band, the musicians and stuff, but few people, uh, mention it in the uh, public discourse with regards to New Wave of British Heavy Metal, so if you don't know this album and never heard this band, go check it out um, as soon as possible. Um, you you won't be disappointed. It's a great album indeed. Next album, um, and the next album is this one right here which is ritual with the album widow um, this is a re-release actually um, the original cover artwork 
um, didn't have the ritual name on the front, just Widow, the, the, the title of the album. So in those times, in the 80s, when this album was released, a lot of bands used to confuse this band um, as the band they thought, or most of the people thought the, the band name was actually Widow and not Ritual, whereas Widow was really the uh, name of the album. Um, it's not easy to describe this album actually because uh, it has a lot of 70s influence compared to uh, Wildfire which is more uh, classic heavy metal feel. This is, has a lot of 70s uh, rock feel and it's uh, the tempo is a little slower, um, the vibe is a, it's, it's a more dreamy kind of vibe, more psychedelic to a certain extent. Um, but the whole mix, particular, is basically this mix of uh, approach from this band makes the music really, really good. There was uh, plans for this band to actually play again. I mean, they have been, uh, um, they have split uh, quite some time ago, but apparently they were going to play, but uh, it didn't happen because of various reasons, which I don't know. Um, but apparently they are not that easy to to work with. Um, it's, a, it's an unfortunate case, basically, because I would really love to uh, to see them play uh, live someday. And the main man behind them is uh, Gypsy Re Beta. Um, so if he happens to uh, see this video, I urge him to try and. Uh, perform live because this and the, the subsequent album to this, which was released quite some time in the 90s, are two great albums, so it would be, uh, it would be, unfor it would be unfortunate not to see them play, play basically once they are available obviously to, to do so. So next album on the list and uh, this is a band which I have seen uh, two or three times live and always great fun and I'm speaking about uh, Saracen um, and the album is Hero, Saints and Fools um, different style of new wave of British heavy metal uh, with a touch of uh, progressive here uh, folk folk progressive some more progressive but uh, there is some kind of uh, folkish kind of vibe as well um, magnificent album I mean from start to finish the title track in this album Hero Saints and Fools is, is amazing it's an amazing track and even the Horsemen of the Apocalypse I mean those are the two standout tracks but obviously all of them are brilliant numbers Ready to Fly, Crusade, the Rock of Ages, I mean, there are no fillers here. Uh, and not only in this album, but on all the albums I'm going to, to speak about. Um, they are top albums from start to finish. So, Saracen, Hero, Saints and Fools. So, uh, we have arrived to the uh, fourth album in this list of uh, my favorite 10 obscure new wave of British heavy metal albums and the al the next album is this one right here um, Titan Rough Justice uh, classic heavy metal uh, with the British touch um, um, a band uh, which uh, was uh, put up by uh, Kevin Riddles after he left uh, Angel Witch um, this album was released in uh, 1985, so a bit out of the uh, new British heavy metal period, yet still um, synonymous with that sound um, on uh, on this release. I mean, uh, bands who were born in uh, in that era still continue to play the style of music, although. Obviously, their albums weren't making as much success as those albums released in the peak peak period of New Wave of the Shiva Metal. Yet, uh, a lot of these albums are 
extremely good. So it's it's important that uh, the world goes around that these albums are worth listening to and amongst the best of that period of time. So Titan Rough Justice, um, there's a track in here which is for me one of the best of the new wave of British heavy metal which is Blind Men and Fools and uh, it's the opening track so if you want to check what this album is all about go to find that track and you'll uh, know exactly what to expect from this album um, next album is uh, from one of the pioneering bands of the genre of, not of the genre, of the movement basically uh, and I'm speaking about uh, Quartz and this is their this album was at least in 1980, a band that uh, had Jeff Nichols, uh, rest in peace, uh, on on guitars as well as, as on um, on vocals. Uh, this band, they had one of the albums. I don't know. If the, this is the second album. I don't know if it's the first one, but it was produced by uh, Tony Iommi, and I think that's where the friendship started. When then. Eventually, Jeff Nichols went on to uh, become a member, although uh, behind the scenes, basically, of Lexa, but on keyboards, I think their friendship started from this album, or from the previous album, uh, which was produced by Tony Iommi. Uh, Quartz are a lot more into hard rock, their style is more hard rock and the mix of hard rock and new wave of British heavy metal, so similar to Budgie to a certain extent. Um, influenced by Deep Purple and the bands that came obviously before them in the early 70s uh, and all and this is an amazing album uh, so check it out because uh, even the rest of their discography course are a very consistent uh, discography so go get um, search this album or go get this album and listen to it and don't lose any time basically fifth album if I'm not mistaken and uh, this is a band which I, I really, really love. And I'm speaking about uh, Desolation Angels. Um, amazing band. Uh, typical new new wave of British heavy metal. This album was released in 1986, a bit out again of the new wave of British heavy metal. Uh, period, so that m might be the reason why this didn't make so much of a hit. Um, Desolation Angels at one point in time actually um, emigrated to the US to try and make it uh, over there, but then apparently things didn't work out as they expected and uh, the band was again relocated to, to the UK. Uh, but uh, it's something to admire from these musicians at the time that they took the liberty to um, try their luck in a bigger market, which is the American market, uh, music industry. Um, it's, it's not an easy feat to leave everything behind and, and go try your luck that way. But apart from that, I mean, uh, uh, this is a incredible album. I mean, uh, you look at the... Side A, Spirit of the Deep, Evil Possessor, Valhalla and Dance and Hero. I mean, you know, we have British heavy metal anthems basically. So, uh, um, and we got this band to play in Malta as well at the Malta Doom Metal Festival. Um, great people. Uh, this is signed as well by them, I think, on the inside. Mm -hmm. I remember them laughing a lot when they saw the, the photos of them when they were younger. Um, how thin they were, and actually this. <laughs> so, the, the thinner days, basically, but some some things that remain etched to your mind when you you are there seeing the people that have composed music which you really which you really love, basically. So, for us, they are like, at least from my perspective, they are kind of. Uh, superheroes, but uh, when you meet these people and uh, have some time to speak with them and all, um, it's really, it's really, it's really nice to get to know them as human beings and as 
musicians and most of them have have music as a as a hobby basically and uh, their passion is, is is really contagious basically so we have arrived to the uh, first four albums now these albums are from those bands which are i think from my perspective are, are really big bands in the movement yet not as big as uh, i am made in sex and diamond head uh, the flipper venom whatever so the next album is is this one right here and uh, this album is by the band satan and the name of the album is suspended sentence this album was released in 1987 uh, they had another other album before this which is po possibly their most famous album which is court in the act uh, which was released i think in 1983 um, but I decided to choose this album, which is a bit less new wave for British heavy metal and a bit more classic heavy metal. Yet it still retains the 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 new wave for British heavy metal core. I mean, no doubt about about that. They have they had changed singers. The singer has a interesting name, which is Michael Jackson, basically. Not the the king of pop, but uh, another Michael Jackson. Different vocals from the first one. More raw kind of harsh vocals, uh, harsher vocals than than the previous. But I think this album is is so good and so underrated compared to their first album. The track of a lunch of of a million hearts is 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 brilliant. Uh, not, not only that, I mean, this, as I said before, this, these albums are uh, top albums from start to finish, no fillers, no nothing, I mean, you put the album there and leave it rolling and uh, you, for sure you will, you will love it from start to finish. But there are obviously peak, peaks in every album and I think in this album is uh, that track which is, which is I mean, kind, kind of a ballad to a certain extent. Uh, less the cheesiness of of, uh, of the sound associated with the word ballads, basically. But um, it's so this is so good, and unfortunately a bit a bit underrated as well. So Satan are quite known, and they have uh, continued to restart it to play um, in. 2012 released an album 2013 which was one of the best comeback albums and one who saw my first video I mentioned them there as one of the best comebacks in the history of heavy metal along with Siritungol uh, Forever Black latest album which are possibly the two best comebacks as far as I'm concerned so Satan suspended sentence get this the next album is the only one I have on uh, CD and not on vinyl yet. Um, I don't know why I didn't get this album on vinyl yet, but um, here it goes. Angel Witch, self-titled. Um, one of the top uh, new wave of heavy metal albums ever made, basically. Um, as much as I love the first two albums by Iron Maiden, I think if someone had to put a gun to my head and made me choose between uh, one of those first two albums and this one, I'd probably choose this one. It is an unpopular opinion, I know, um, but this album is that good and I love the first two. I mean, who is into heavy metal and doesn't love the first two Iron Maiden albums? I mean, you, must, you have to be deaf not to like them. You might not love them, but I have yet to hear someone who doesn't like those, but anyway, um, surprises are always around the corner. Uh, this is signed by Kevin Hayborn himself when he came to Malta. Um, they were brought to Malta by friends of mine from Metal Insula Promotions, um, and they had uh, asked me to, to be there to be the driver for them during the weekend, so I spent a whole weekend driving Angel Witch around from hotel to location to around Malta and all that stuff and I we took some photos um, with them which 
I'm going to to put here. And I mean, what if I had to choose a track from this album? It would probably be Freeman. Um, incredible track. I really love the lyrics. Um, a big eye opener. The lyrics are a big eye opener um, of someone who gets out from jail and uh, the people he regarded as friends just ignored him basically so he's, he basically went from being in jail to moving to another jail metaphorical jail basically but the title track angel was is synonymous the chorus um white witch brilliant solo in that in that track one of the best albums in general you can ever get angel witch self-titled and we arrived to the last two albums um i left them as the last albums um, because they're very special to to me and they are not the new wave of british heavy metal bands with the classic heavy metal tempo but rather the slower tempo which are sometimes regarded as New Wave of British Heavy Metal slash Doom Metal. But for me, they are uh, primarily New Wave of British Heavy Metal bands. And I'm speaking about um, the first album by uh, Pagan Alter. Um, let me remove this huge booklet over here. Very heavy. This is a re-released re -release by Buried by Time and thus amazing um, product i mean heavy very heavy uh, very durable albums quality with the poster and stuff i mean from pagan all that now anyone who knows who knows me quite well knows how much pagan all that means to me they are more than a band they are friends um, there's an emotional connection between between myself and uh, uh, and the band, uh, especially Terry. Uh, rest his peace as well. Um, one of when I uh, got to know about his passing, I mean, it was one of the saddest days of of my life, basic basically, because he was really, really, always really nice to me, and we spoke a number of times. I was the uh, moderator on the Pagan Altar Templars Forum as well um, for some time and uh, uh, our talks were really uh, as, as two friends basically rather than two people who knew each other and I really appreciate that he um, sent me uh, the mythical and magical album um, his own copy free of charge um, he didn't want any money so I really hold those uh, those instances close close to heart basically so but that doesn't affect my judgment of their music um but again i mean pagan altar is uh, at the topest the, the highest point um of my of my all time uh, table of favorite bands basically i mean top five favorite bands pagan altar are there so uh, no surprises here. Um, this is, a, as I told you, this is a release because the first album was had a different cover and was self-titled, not named Judgment of the Dead. Um, but the tracks are, are the same. Basically, this album was released in 1982. Uh, not sorry, not released. It was recorded in 1982, but then released officially in 1998 because for some reason the band didn't find uh, the time and the funds to release it back then, but it's still obviously a product of the early 80s uh, period, so it's definitely new wave of British heavy metal, um, obviously with an obscure touch, with a doomier touch, more occult uh, lyrics um, and titled, you know, you have uh, March of the Dead, uh, The Black Mass, The Dance of the Banishee, Reincarnation, you can see basically uh, the the, um, the direction of the lyrics where it's set. Terry was an amazing uh, lyricist, 
how he put the words, how he described the story, it's, it's amazing. I remember from forums and uh, his post, he used to, I mean, write long posts with ideas he had in his mind, but it captivated you. So the lyrics in, in, in Pagan Altar are not short of uh, amazing, basically. So um, here it goes, Pagan Altar, an essential, essential band and an essential album for all those who love New Wave of British heavy metal, especially with the darker, more mystical touch. The last album is not so different from uh, Pagan Altar, yet um, not the same as such, so they are very, very peculiar in their sound. Um, the thing uh, between Pagan Altar and this band right here, with, which is named Witchfinder General, this album is called Death Penalty, is they have uh, peculiar vocal styles. Both Terry Jones from Pagan Altar and Z Parks have, uh, when you hear their singing, you will obviously immediately recognize them. Some people love that, some people don't love that. Um, I'm, I'm on the side of people who really loves um, their vocal uh, timbre, basically. Um, a band which uh, created a lot of uh, problems with, with their album covers for some reason in the 80s, not mainly because of the uh, nude or semi-nude women on the front, but rather because of the places of the backdrop they use. This is a symmetry, there's another album, Friends of Hell, where they, uh, they shot this, the photos in front of a, in front of a church. Uh, but obviously with a name like Witch Wonder General and the prosecution of uh, witches, uh, they wanted to depict that kind of vibe uh, to which they were alluding with, with their uh, band name and obviously um, uh, tracks and uh, the direction of their lyrics. Um, again, slower kind of uh, new wave of British heavy metal, um, the more to the doom kind of uh, spectrum, um, but this is really, again, really, really good albums. You don't know which find their general, if you know, if you don't know any of the bands I mentioned, basically, not only which one there, but these last four bands are essential, I mean. If you're into this, this style and you don't know any of these bands, as soon as this video finishes, let it finish first. Uh, watch it, watch this till the end. We are almost there. Um, but as soon as it finishes, um, go find the uh, search for their music and listen to it and buy the buy the albums, obviously. We had to um, choose a, a song from from this album, probably be that penalty or uh, burning a sinner, which find their general as well. I mean, it's difficult to choose a track from these band, from these albums because they are so good and not easy. You can short out, uh, shortlist favorite tracks basically. But those are my uh, 10 albums, uh, 10 obscure favorite New Wave of British Heavy Metal albums. I am going to post links to these bands in the description of the video. And, uh, I have loads of new wave of British heavy metal albums which I wanted to include, but obviously I wanted to keep uh, everything as concise and short as possible. But don't uh, hesitate to write band names which you think are should have been included in this list. Obviously everyone has his own ideas and uh, preferences, but obviously these kinds of uh, videos and uh, posts and social media are made to create a discussion and so every suggestion is uh, welcomed. Um, that is all uh, for this time. Um, uh, I will be putting more videos in the coming days and weeks, so stay tuned, subscribe, like the video as usual in these uh, the usual things to say before closing this video, but it obviously will um, give us that incentive to continue putting up these videos because believe me, they are uh, a lot of work behind the research and albums and choices and photos and editing. So um, I love to do it, though, uh, uh, obviously, because if I, there is something which doesn't give me satisfaction, I wouldn't do it in the first place, but obviously. Um, your support is more than welcome. So stay tuned. 
more videos to come in the coming days and weeks.